You know that feeling when you are blessed with a night with great seeing conditions that allow for some amazing views of the planets. And yet you keep asking yourself, what can I do in order to see a little bit more detail? One answer to that question might be to use astronomical filters. Well, Today, I have the lunar and planetary filter cell from Lumicon with me and we are going to see if they can really show more details when observing the night sky. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's get this review on the road. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. Astronomical filters work by blocking a certain wavelength of light while letting other pass through. This can boost contrast, remove glare or unwanted light reflections and help reveal subtle details that you couldn't see otherwise. If observing the moon and the planets of our solar system is your goal, then you might consider an ND or neutral density filter or a polarizing filter. These will help reduce glare and scattered light. Another popular filter type for planetary observations are color filters. They work by blocking specific wavelengths of light, enabling you to see planets with less color information, but with better contrast. There are also other types of filters like UHC or O3 filters, which I'm not going to explain now. But if you are interested in learning more about them and about filters in general, then I encourage you to check out my video Understanding Filters. I leave a link in the description below. One of the more popular manufacturers of astronomical filters is Lumicon. They made a name for themselves producing high quality products for visual and astrophotography applications. Since 2016, Lumicon has operated under the OSI or Optical Structure Incorporated umbrella. OSI being a high-tech manufacturing company that specializes in electro-optical magnetical engineering and manufacturing based in California, USA. You may have heard about OSI before. That's because they are the parent company for other brands as well, such as Farpoint, GMI, Astrodon and Optic Wave Laboratories. All producing different kinds of equipment for both professional and amateur astronomers. One of Lumicon's trademark products is their lineup for astronomical filters such as the lunar and planetary filter set I have with me today. They have kindly sent it to me and I want to thank them for that. The set consists of four one and a quarter inch filters designed to improve lunar and planetary observations. In order to test these filters, I use them in combination with a nine millimeter delight and a 24 millimeter panoptic eyepiece, both attached to a 12 inch Doxonian telescope. The observations were done on nights with decent seeing conditions under Bortle 4 skies. The first filter in the set is the ND25 filter, which means that it features a 25% transmission rate. It's also made out of high quality shot and Hoya optical glass, which allows for higher quality images compared to standard ND filters. This one is especially useful when observing very bright objects, such as the moon. In some cases where the aperture of the telescope is big enough, this filter can also be used to better split faint double stars, for example. The reason being that thanks to the low transmission rate, only a quarter of the incoming light gets through and this reduces glare, making finer details more visible. For example, terrain features on the moon that otherwise wouldn't be visible because of the intense brightness start to show themselves when observing with this filter, making exploring the moon's surface that more interesting. The second filter in this set is the ATA blue color filter. This one is built in such a way that all of the blue spectrum of light and a bit of green and red gets passed through, the average transmission rate being 29%. 
The ATA is very popular among astronomers who want to observe Jupiter and Saturn because it is able to extract a bit more detail out of the image which makes features like cloud bands stand out a little bit more when compared to views without a filter. During my testing I found out that out of the two planets the views of Jupiter were the ones that benefited the most from this filter. I love the fact that with the filter on I was able to see the finer cloud bands around the great red spot. Also the massive cloud band in the northern hemisphere of the planet had a lot more contrast to it and was much better visible than without a filter. This is why, to me, this is the best filter for observing Jupiter. On the other hand, while observing Saturn, I wasn't able to notice any significant improvements while using the ATA. But this might be a result of the less than perfect seeing conditions present during the day. I used it to observe the Moon as well, but just like with Saturn, I didn't notice any dramatic improvements other than reduced glare um, from the lower transmission rate. The third filter in this set is the 15 yellow color filter. It blocks anything below 510 nanometers wavelength, allowing only green, yellow and red to pass through. The average transmission rate being 66%. This filter should be well suited for observing the polar caps and terrain features on Mars, star details on the Moon, red-blue contrast features on Jupiter and red-orange contrast features on Saturn. Well, during my observations, both the views of Jupiter and Saturn improved a bit when I added the filter to the eyepiece. On Jupiter, the final cloud bands around the Great Red Spot I mentioned earlier started to become visible just like in the case of the ATA but they weren't as pronounced here. The cloud bands in the northern hemisphere had more contrast to them and looked better against the rest of the planet's atmosphere. On Saturn the 15 yellow filter brought up a bit more details on the rings which had a bit more definition to them. This also applies to the shadow they cast on the planet as well. Because of the better contrast, Saturn simply looks amazing against the dark background of space. While observing Mars, this filter allowed me to better identify the polar ice caps. It also highlighted some of the darker terrain features, which I really enjoyed. And the last filter in the set is the 56 green color filter. It has an overall transmission rate of 53% and mainly focuses on the green portion of the light spectrum. This allows it to boost contrast, making features like Jupiter's cloud bands, Saturn's rings and Martian ice caps more visible. Terrain features on the Moon should also become a bit more visible with a 56 green. During my observations, I noticed that especially the views of Saturn and Mars benefited the most from this filter. To my eye, there were more details visible compared to when I was using the 15 yellow color filter. That's why for me this is the best filter out of the four for observing these two planets. When observing Jupiter, the views did not improve quite as much as they did when using the ATA Blue. So for Jupiter, I'd still get that one. While the 56 green filter can show a bit more contrast during moon observations, here I still prefer the ND25 filter. If you're interested in finding out which filter is better suited for a certain planet, then there is a very nice overview on aginaastro.com. The authors did a really good job in highlighting the strengths of each filter type. I leave a link in the description below for you to check out later. One little detail I really like about these filters is that all feature grooves cut into the metal housing so you can grip and screw them onto the eyepieces very easily. These grooves are also helpful when it's dark outside and you're trying to figure out which side is the one with the thread for attaching the filter to the eyepiece. It's nice that they thought of this. Speaking of attaching them to the eyepiece, 
Normally, you can screw the filter onto the bottom of the eyepiece. But if you are using a diagonal for visual observations, then it might be better to attach the filter to the diagonal instead of the eyepiece. This is because the barrel of the eyepiece with the filter attached might be too long to fully fit inside the diagonal. This was exactly the case with my one and a quarter inch prism diagonal from Bader. Build quality wise, all filters are made out of metal and glass and are very well put together. They have a nice weight to them and feel premium when holding them in hand. Astronomical filters are nice little additions to an existing eyepiece collection, capable of improving the views of the night sky by reducing glare and boosting contrast. Priced at around 200 US dollars, the lunar and planetary filter set from Lumicon is certainly not cheap. But if you are interested in squeezing a bit more detail out of the views of the moon and the planets, then investing in a decent filter set like this one might be a good idea. All right, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.